to be showing you how to make ice and plastics glow using nothing but liquid nitrogen to get them really, really cold in a UV source. So a couple months ago I was playing around with some liquid nitrogen, a taser, and a bit of styrofoam. And I stumbled across this neat effect that hopefully I'll be able to recreate today and explain in a bit more depth. So to show you this effect, I first have to dim the lights. I'm also turning up the sensitivity on my camera right now so it's a bit easier to see it. So I'm going to take the liquid nitrogen, I'm going to pour it into this piece of styrofoam, and wait a couple seconds for it to cool down. Now that it's cold, I'm going to take the taser, bring it close to the styrofoam, and discharge it. Now you can very clearly see that there's a glowing sort of purplish spot right next to where the taser discharged. I'm going to do it again just so you guys can see it. Again. So I thought that this was pretty cool and uh, I was curious so I looked on the internet a bit to see if I could find anything on the subject but I uh, couldn't really find a whole lot. What I did notice though from experimenting was is that at room temperature Nothing really seemed to happen. And the other thing that I noticed was is that the arc itself didn't really even have to touch the styrofoam in order for the effect to take place. So that made me think that the effect wasn't from the actual electricity of the taser, it was actually from the light being given off by the arc. So today I want to test that theory, and to do it I have a couple of light sources that may be able to recreate that glow. So first up, we're going to test to see if visible light is the culprit of the glow. Uh, so to do that, I'm using this 4000 lumen LED flashlight. Here we are at uh, room temperature. Here we are at liquid nitrogen temperatures. Okay, so next up we have the incandescent black light. This doesn't really produce a lot of UV light, but it does produce a lot of violet light. Room temperature. liquid nitrogen temperatures. Now we have a compact fluorescent black light. Room temperature test. The liquid nitrogen temperature test. Last up, we have a germicidal lamp. This lamp is quite dangerous, and to protect myself from the UV, I'm using a polycarbonate shield here. So I'm sure many of you are thinking, well, Ty, what if it's the nitrogen that's glowing and not the styrofoam? And I was thinking the same thing too. So to test this, I have to get rid of this styrofoam container we were using before. And instead, I'm going to pour the nitrogen into this metal one here, this is a doer. And that way, if it is in fact the nitrogen that's glowing, it should still glow inside of this container. I'm just going to fill up this doer with some liquid nitrogen. And hopefully this setup will spare a couple years of my life lost to 
being exposed to this radiation. Well, now we can say for sure the nitrogen isn't the thing that's glowing. So what's interesting is uh, those glowing bits in there actually appear to be ice. So perhaps water actually glows from this effect too. We'll have to try that. I thought I'd try a couple other materials to see if maybe they would glow. Here I have a, a bottle cap um, from a plastic water bottle. Uh, this is a latex condom. I have a Ziploc baggie, a piece of polycarbonate, and a piece of mica. I also, right now, I'm pre-chilling a piece of ice so that it will be cool by the time we do the test. Um, and hopefully some of these things will also glow. With the exception of the ice, all these things are at room temperature. Let's see if any of them glow. All right, well the ice obviously glows. Let's cool them all down with a bit of liquid nitrogen. I changed the white balance a bit just so you can see how different materials glow in different colors. The mica didn't really do much. Now because of the color balance, both the ice and the plastic bottle cap appear to glow green in this video, but in reality they're both glowing blue. Here's a montage of all the things we tested with a normal color balance. And here's a piece of styrofoam and a doer. I have this cloth here that uh, comes from a chemical resistant fabric. Alright, now we're going to try the fabric. So here's what I think is happening. I think that the normal electron transitions that take place when you shine a UV light on these materials is somehow being slowed down by cooling them to low temperatures. This is a lot like how a glow-in-the-dark toy works, where you have electrons excited by some sort of light to a high energy state, and then over a long period of time those electrons slowly but surely relax, giving off light. Now obviously this explanation is just my best guess, and the truth is I don't really know why it is these materials are glowing. However, if it is for the same reason that glow-in-the-dark toys glow, I find it striking that they're glowing in a violet color rather than the normal, familiar green color that most glow-in-the-dark toys glow in. Now the reason why I find that fascinating is because the amount of energy required to give off violet light is significantly greater than the amount of energy required to give off green light. And so that means that the electron transitions taking place in these atoms have to be much greater than the ones that are taking place in a normal glow-in-the-dark toy. Anyway, that's all I got. Uh, let me know if you have any ideas of your own as to why this effect's taking place, or if you'd like to see some other materials put in liquid nitrogen and uh, exposed to UV light.